<laughs> Especially being that he had a brand new baby boy and the ease of being able just to go right on over to the Key Arena and fight in that main event. It's nice that I didn't have to fight anywhere and I'm just right up the street um, from my house. Um, and I just try to stay focused and, you know, if, if my body feels, you know, the energy from the crowd, then that's fantastic. It'll help me in the fight. With Moraga, what I've seen from him, and, and it's kind of rough with his fights because he's only had two in the UFC, uh, we've seen that he's a very strong finisher in his fights, from the guillotine to the knockout of you with Gomez. Uh, what do you see for yourself as uh, the biggest challenge in this fight with him? Just going out there and imposing my will on him. You know, he's a guy who keeps calm, moves around, those are combinations. And, you know, he likes to keep a steady pace. Or, you know, I can keep a steady pace, push the pace, slow the pace down, take the fight wherever I need to, and just go out there and pose my will. Yeah, do you see him as being really hungry for the title? And how much does, when you see uh, the, the drive that another fighter has to come after the belt, what does that do for you mentally? Do you, what thoughts go through your head when you know that there's somebody coming to take what's yours? Um, I don't really have any thoughts. A fight's a fight. You know, I, I think... My thought is the same, just like if it wasn't for the title. Like, this is a fight, you know. The title is a title. It's an achievement. You know, I, I have my belt at home just sitting on the, on the desk, just sitting there. So, it, it, a fight's a fight. You know, I look at it as more as he's coming to fight me to, to, to beat me, beat me, instead of him coming to fight and taking my belt away. That's how I look at it. That's another way to look at it for sure. And in each fight that you've had, you pretty much are able to adjust on the fly. And I think that's one of the traits that's really made you strong as a champion. Um, how is that that you work so well through adversity in a fight and that you are able to adapt on the fly? What is it that you work on to actually achieve that? Um, that comes from great training, great coaches. You know, my coaches are very well-rounded. They're not, you know, you see this person has, this is my jiu-jitsu coach. This coach is my boxing coach. This coach is my wrestling coach. I don't have that. Um, I have, you know, Maddie. All right. Back in ten. I think I can fight anywhere, and they understand mixed martial arts, and not like, okay, we got to work on your jiu-jitsu. Five. It, it's four, not like that. I don't have, three, you know. Two. I have one, one co combination of great coaches. And that was a little bit of sound with Demetrius Johnson that, again, Heidi Fang was able to get the other day. So, Heidi, you know, talking to Demetrius, he, he sounds like he's pretty pretty confident, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. He's got no doubt in his mind that his game plan that he's put together will be the right one for this fight. Uh, no matter where Demetrius takes it, I mean, obviously we know he's a takedown machine. But he also has, a, like I said in the interview, a really great way of working through adversity. And he played a lot of credit to his coaches, saying that his coaching staff prepares him for every single different thing that could happen to him inside the octagon. So he said he's more than ready. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like it. Uh, Joey, Phil, y your thoughts here uh, on Demetrius. I mean, what do you think about him going into this fight? I, I Listen, I've talked about it since the beginning. I'm a big fan of the flyweight division. Demetrius Johnson has, you know, every time he goes in there, it's it, we talked about like with Tiffany, it's the speed kills. He, he's fast as can be. He's constantly moving. Uh, will Moraga be able to get his hands on him? I don't know. You know, Moraga's got just as good, a, if not a better wrestling background than Demetrius, right? Yeah, he, he definitely has a, the, I believe, the higher wrestling IQ, the, the more accolades in that art. But you know what, Phil, when you touch on it, the speed kills factor, it's not just that he's fast. He's fast everywhere. His punches are fast. His double legs fast. His footwork is fast. His his closing the distance is fast. His elusiveness is fast. You know he knows how to use his speed. And one thing Heidi touched on in the interview was he knows how to use that speed and make adjustments on the fly. You know that's a huge thing. In that John Dotson fight, you know he got clipped. He got caught a couple times, and he was having a difficulty kind of finding that range. He made the adjustment. He tied it up. He used the clinch game. He used the dirty boxing, and that was his tool. That was what he was able to get the W with. Uh, John Moraga's got a tough, t t uh, tough, tough task on his hands. Um, he, he's he's good. He's a rangy fighter. You know he's not the best stand up artist there is. He was he was struggling with Carriasso in his last fight, but he does have some pop. I don't know if he has enough pop to put down. 
Demetrius Johnson. You know, if you touch any man on the right spot, and they say the, the, the one you don't see coming is the one that knocks you out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anyone can be caught. But if John Dotson, he's one of the biggest power punchers in the division, couldn't put away Demetrius Johnson, couldn't catch Demetrius Johnson, you know, I just don't see John Moraga doing it. I hope he can. Not that I don't like Demetrius Johnson, but just because I want to see a fight. I want to see a back-and-forth battle. I want to see Moraga in the fight and not just getting steamrolled. But I, 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 unfortunately, I think that he is going to get hey, steamrolled. We, we've talked about it this year. This may be the year of the upsets. I mean, you had Weidman beat Silva. We may see George St. Pierre, you know, another dominant champion, lose his belt later on this year against Johnny Hendricks. Hell, we got Chike Lindsay tonight, I, I a guy who no one, no one is giving a chance against Yadsen Klai, and you know damn well that this fight could end in a major upset. And I see the same thing could happen tomorrow. Yeah. And I, I think, but I'm sorry, David, I think the one thing that's mo most going to be the worst for Johnson if he does lose is nobody knows who Moraga is. We've talked about this before. This is the first guy, I think, in history to go from fighting on the prelims, first fight Facebook on both his fights, to and now up. he's in the main event. So not many people know who he is. Well, let's let's stick here with the theme of possible upsets. While we've only got a couple of minutes here left with Andrew Simon, who, of course, is the CEO of Access TV. Access TV is broadcasting Lion Fight 10, uh, and Access TV has, of course, become a premier destination for combat sports programming. Uh, so, Andrew, your thoughts on the potential of an upset with Yadsen Klai and Chike. Are you, you know, enough... Uh, enough interested in the sport where you've got an opinion on this or would it do you think just be great television if an upset like this could actually take place well, of course i have interest in the sport let's be clear <laughs> I'm, the one, I'm the one that brought this to the network let's, let's yeah. be clear about that thank you you know you can always see upsets i mean in the last show top itch, uh, you know if i'm saying that right i mean he fought a guy with 150 knocked fights and out. he had nine yeah. and knocked him out you know so you know anything can happen especially in muay thai so tonight I think it would be quite surprising to see Yatsen Klai go down, but that, that's just me personally. I think Yatsen Klai takes tonight's event, but anything can happen. As we said, these upsets, the guy only lost two times in 26 fights. Uh, Lindsay has as good a shot as anybody. Absolutely. And, and real quick, guys, because, again, Andrew's only got a couple of minutes. I just wanted to ask a quick question about England. Lucy Payne was on with us earlier, and they don't have Access TV right now uh, available via broadcast. They do have through the Internet. Are there any plans in the immediate future for Access TV to expand its footprint internationally? Yeah, I mean, today we, we're actually in 42 million homes today in North America. And someday we actually do want to be in other countries. And so a lot of our rights, it, it's really a rights issue. When you get rights for television and concerts, you take concert uh, rights for a territory versus the world. And so we're always taking a look at, you know, uh, which rights can we get internationally. And when we do that for fights, we have the ability to do that. Excellent. Well, again, Andrew Simon, uh, CEO of Access TV. Andrew, I know you've got to get your uh, get yourself moving and a grooving. You're a very busy guy. Uh, we really appreciate you taking out so much time of your schedule and talking with us today. Uh, again, Access TV found in over 42 million homes in North America. Uh, used to be called HDNet. So everybody out there with these, uh, you know, satellite uh, satellite TV providers, they know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, great way to catch combat sports, and you guys are doing a lot of exciting programming. So thanks again for coming on. Hey, thank you for having us, and enjoy the fights. Oh, uh, it's thank good. You. It's going to be a blast. Um, Joey, Heidi, Phil, uh, and, of course, Dr. Burke, uh, let, let's stay right here um, with Lion Fight 10 real quick. So we see the energy and the enthusiasm from fans, uh, from media alike, down here for this Muay Thai uh, card. You guys have gotten a chance to now see the influx of folks. Are, are, do you think we're going to see a full sellout here tonight, guys? Uh, uh, yeah, I think we will. And just be careful, Dave. You weren't down here for our last Lion Fight I was uh, not. Pre-show. Usually what happens in about, I'd say, five, ten minutes, the crowd's going to start coming in a lot more, yep. a lot more, and there's going to be total anarchy here. Trust me, people are going <laughs> to jump on the set. People are going to, it's going to go it's, crazy. It's all because of Joey and Dr. Burke, right? Oh, we, we've yeah. got the two most handsome guys in show business sitting right Neck down there. right over Do here. Dr. Burke, Dr. Burke, hands down. Come on now. Well, you know, I wasn't going to say anything, but you I work with you all the time, though, Joe, so I'm, try, I'm trying to, trying to put it out you. I'm not going to listen to all that stuff Phil was saying about you. <laughs> it's not true. You are awesome. If you think you're sexy and you want your body. Hey, Heidi Fang making her <laughs> debut on Access TV and UFC Radio. Uh, again, Dr. Burke and his staff, a 
of medical professionals can cure your hangover. So if you're out there right now drinking, okay? Hopefully you're not driving. I want you to be at home when you're doing this. And you're going to need some sort of recovery. Give our friends at Hangover Heaven a call at 900-0660 or go online to hangoverheaven.com and make an appointment. Now, uh, we also heard, guys, uh, for about Brooks Brothers Bail Bonds earlier in the show. There are new sponsors to the program. So I guess if we're in trouble, we now have a great place to call awesome. here. So maybe, you know, they well, drank too much. They got a hangover cure. They need to get themselves out of jail. You know what I mean? We've, we've got a, a great little relationship. Well, that, that's what happens. The people who didn't take your advice and call Dr. Burke <laughs> yep. are going to get in trouble, and then they'll need now need the bail bonds. That, that's right. Well, you know, it's, 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 <laughs> listen, this is a family affair, and, and this is why we're doing it together. And it's funny. I can see now actually some of the fighters uh, walking by our oh, table yeah. here because, of course, uh, Lion Fight 10 officially has begun. I, I can't see inside, so I'm not sure if they've kicked off the first of the undercard fights, but the doors did open at four. Uh, fights should be starting here fairly shortly. Guys, um, we've got a few other things we want to cover here before we start breaking down more of UFC on Fox 8. Uh, I want to talk about this after party tonight at the Ainsworth. Yeah. Okay, so everybody that comes to the Lion Fight can enjoy a $5 drink specials from 8 p.m. until 11 p.m. And any of the lounge's delicious menu options, including tuna tacos or the signature Ainsworth sliders. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been sitting here uh, all day long, and now I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. And I can tell Phil has found this to be quite hilarious. I didn't write the copy, Phil. I'm just I, no, reading I, it. No, no, we're both, we're both <laughs> just salivating over some tuna tacos. Yeah. I bet you are. And, you know, they're also going to have a host there, Chinge Andrada. She's a, a Filipino superstar. And she's going to be hosting the party, so it's yeah. going to be pretty she's awesome. She's going to be serving the tuna tacos. It's going to be awesome. It's <laughs> going to be awesome. The Ainsworth's a great place to sit for the party to be at, too. Well, I tell you, I mean, this place is, is just a great place to get your taco fix. You've got the pink taco. You've got tuna tacos. I, I think there's just about every kind of taco that you could look for down here at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. The joint inside the Hard Rock, of course, is going to be the place to be tonight, guys. At 7 p.m., we've got the main card starting. Uh, that's going to feature a title fight that is brand new to Lion Fight Promotions. This, of course, is their middleweight uh, their middleweight title. This is the inaugural fight for the middleweight title. So we've got the veteran Yadsen Klai Fairtext versus the American up-and-comer and, and, and great-looking fighter, uh, Chike Lindsay. We were watching some of his highlight films here. Joey had him uh, on the computer, and it just looked spectacular. So uh, great highlights from Chike. Uh, and it looks like we're actually here in another couple of minutes going to be able to get on. Kevin Ross uh, is going to be coming over. Huggy Bear. And uh, joining us here at the table, of course, Kevin is going to be taking on Matt Embry tonight uh, at the fight here. And Kevin uh, used to live in Las Vegas, so we, we've had a lot of great times, uh, you know, and memories with Kevin Ross out here. Joey, you and Kevin have, have known each other for a little while, correct? He's actually kicked me in the face a few times. Nice. And uh, deservedly or during not, training? Clearly not enough. We were at dinner. <laughs> uh, well, that's what I was thinking. Deservedly or during training? Yes. So... Kevin, with uh, we, let's get before we get him on here your prediction real quick because I know you know him, but uh, that doesn't ever stop you from making a good prediction. What do you think about him in the fight with Embry? No, you know what? I, I gotta lean towards Kevin. It's just it's just the well roundness of his game. He puts his punches together like a professional boxer. He incorporates elbows in those combinations like they were punches. You know, he finishes with head kicks, leg kicks. He's tricky, sneaky. He's always in shape. He's known as the best American tie fighter for a reason, and I just think he does it tonight. Yeah, and, and the fight with him and Embry has been one that North American Muay Thai fans have been very excited about. It's been talked about for a while, so now that we get to have it tonight, it's going to be awesome. Well, and you know what's really interesting here, Doctor? Uh, you weren't with us on Tuesday when we were actually talking to Kevin in advance of this fight, but tomorrow is also Kevin's birthday. So, uh, you know, he's got a little something extra here to motivate him. Uh, he is going to be the ripe young age of 33 tomorrow, July 27th. So uh, a great thing for him. He can come out, fight Matt Embry, maybe pick up a victory and uh, celebrate birthday uh, in style. So we're going to talk to Kevin here uh, in just a minute. Now, again, the, the after party tonight at the Ainsworth, guys, is for everybody that comes down and has a ticket to the Lion Fight 10 fight this evening and that will include five dollar drink specials from eight to eleven uh, of course the ainsworth sliders all the other great stuff that uh, joey and phil were talking about there uh we've got to we've got to go on man we no keep, you keep... know you, you got to come down not just for the drinks for the for the tuna tacos <laughs> for the tuna and, tacos and the tuna tacos sell themselves and you know? and you get to hang out with the fighters and have a few drinks 
after the fight. Absolutely. You can't go wrong with it. No, I, I would say that sounds like a match made in uh, in fight heaven. And uh, without further ado, because I know he's a busy guy here, uh, we're going to bring on perhaps the um, best American kickboxer that we know of, Kevin Ross, former Las Vegas guy. Uh, thanks so much, Kevin, for coming on to the MMA Fight Corner. How you feeling in advance of the fight tonight? Oh, my pleasure, man. I feel great. You know, I feel really, really, really good, ready to go. You look very relaxed. I am. I was falling asleep earlier. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, what, what does that tell you about the fight when you're that relaxed? Does that basically mean you've done all the preparation that you can do? You've set yourself up to be victorious. And at this point, it really is just relying on your skill set and your repetition. Yeah, you know, once you get to a certain stage uh, in your career, you really realize, you know, all the hard work's done. There's no reason to get all amped up and crazy, especially when you got, like, five more hours to kill. It's just a waste, wasted energy, you know, so... I've always been a relaxed person as it is, but over the years I've been more and more relaxed, and now I'm just like, they got to wake me up before it's time to go out there. <laughs> How important is it, though, not just to, you, you know, you talked about the energy and people, you know, spending that energy while they're waiting for their fight. Yeah. And, and, you know, not just relaxing before the fight, but keeping that composure and staying relaxed while being intense in a fight. Yeah, that's very important, obviously. You know, you, know, you look at the TIE fighters. They're just cool as can be. They're getting <laughs> their faces smashed in. They it looks like they don't care, you know, and it's that, that whole thing, not wasting your energy because you only have so much to use in there. And if you're using it, getting frustrated or annoyed or getting all amped up, like flexing your muscles, that's just just a waste. And you see people just gas out from that kind of thing. So you, the, the calmer you can stay, yet focused at the same time, it's that, it's that balance between the two. We actually saw that a couple, uh, two years ago, I was at a King of the Cage fight here in town. And this, Sounds about right. This dude was all jacked and yoked up and yeah. flexing, and he came running out and got knocked yeah. out three seconds later. You know, you know yeah. it, it just doesn't pay. But now this is your, your third fight back after having surgery. Yeah. Uh, how has the pro the progression fe you know gone with your training and the rehabilita rehabilitation so far? Yeah, really well. You know, this has been the first camp I really felt like I was able to hit all the things I, I, I needed to hit. You know, uh, the last few I was still training just as hard, if not harder. But there was a few things I had to shy away from, like the sprinting. You know, my knees started getting a little sore, so I had to adjust and maybe do them on the bike or the, uh, you know. Whatever we had to do to adjust to get that same kind of sprint work, but but now I feel like I'm really back to I can do anything I need to do, anything I needed to do before, and uh, I, I felt like I had a full real camp like just like I had before, so I, I feel back. Well, what interests me is in your last fight, I understand that you were actually battling a sickness <laughs> so when bad. you got in the cage. So, so how much different do you feel now? Is that a lot uh, better for you? Amazing. You know, I was telling my coach, I'm like. You know, this uh, weigh-ins, I feel so much better, and it was like, what, five, six pounds lighter. He's like, yeah, you were sick last time. You just didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I was just telling myself I had allergies or something, you know, and it hit me in the fight, and that's why it was such a you uh, know, and that, that was a, a lot of people criticize saying that you gassed out early, yeah. but yeah. because you're a cardio beast, that's yeah. never <laughs> been an issue. And all of a sudden, everyone's like, "Oh, you know, Kevin's gassing. What's yeah. going on?" No, yeah. you were sick. I was so sick, man. You know, I was like, after I got out the ring, my body just shut down. Like wow. I was like hunched over. See now, like, Kevin, the good out. thing here, we have a doctor in the house. Fortunately, they can right. they can help you. <laughs> Doctor Burke and his staff, they have the coolest thing. It's called Hangover and Vita Heaven. They do this intravenous vitamin oh, supplement yeah. retherapy. Oh nice. my gosh, best stuff. Joey Varner takes his therapies and when he comes into studio he's levitating literally four <laughs> inches off the ground uh, just out of reach for another Kevin Ross kick to the forehead I can um, get up there still. you know Kevin real quick because uh, you know I, I, I know. know I know that as we get uh, get prepped here it's 535 in the valley uh, yeah. the main card starts in about an hour and a half uh, tell us a little bit about Matt Embry and, and what you've done to prepare for him specifically or has there been anything different in, in your training uh, to prepare specifically for Matt um, you know, just kind of working on the stuff I've been trying to uh, adjust in my game plan, you know, at this stage in my uh, career. Not my game plan, my style. Uh, having a little more patience while still being the same active, aggressive person I always am, but, but not mindlessly doing it, where, which is what I kind of did before. I would just, you know, take it to people, you know, and wouldn't really care about what they were doing. And, you know, sometimes I made easy fights harder in that sense because uh, I didn't take the time to set some things up. And uh, some of those guys like Embry, who just like to lay back and don't mind sitting on the ropes and eking out a win, it kind of plays into their hand, you know, if, if they can if they can pull it off. So I've been uh, working on adjusting that, not just for Embry, but 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 for a lot of guys that that have that style, especially at this higher level. So hopefully you're, that's what you're going to see tonight—a uh, new and improved, yet the same uh, same old same old me. 
<laughs> same old. Now, and this is a fight that we've talking about has been very anticipated. Yeah. Two, you know, two of the best North American kickboxers going at it. Mm -hmm. uh, has this been, in your eyes, a long time coming? Uh, yes and no. I mean, they've been talking about it for a long time, but you know, this—he's not exactly someone that was on my like top five list of guys I'm like dying to fight. You know, I'm, I mean, I knew it needed to happen just because you know we're top guys in North America and that whole thing. But, but I want to fight guys that that I like to watch fight that excite me. I'm like, yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a crazy fight. You know, and. No, you know, no disrespect to Matt, but I, I'm not, I don't enjoy his style so much. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to watch him fight. He's very good at what he does and his style of fighting, but I don't, it, I don't look at him and say, yeah, I really want to fight that guy. It's just, not for you. No. It's just we're, we need to fight, and it, it is, can still be a great fight, too. You know, but uh, it, it's not my uh, dream team list of fights. Well, what is the dream team list of fights? Uh, Liam Harrison, for sure. Uh, I want to rematch with Sakadal, for sure. Um, Yamato, which might be coming up very soon. Uh, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually heard that. Actually, that oh, was did you? Yeah, Kent said that. Oh, they talked about it. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you're sorry, okay. It's you're done. okay. Yeah, he mentioned it's it. already, <laughs> it's already, that's happening. Well, Kevin, we, we've got a couple of minutes here before we're going to take our final break on Please. the MMA Fight Corner in advance, of course, of Lion Fight Ten. If you're just tuning into the MMA Fight Corner, we've got Kevin Ross on with us, who is going to be fighting Matt Embry in uh, the fight coming up here in just a little while. Uh, so, Kevin, your birthday tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, okay, sir. you're still a very young man. We're born in the same year, so we're super young. Uh, this super, is super young, super young uh, but this is going to be a big weekend for you. Uh, you know, we've got, you know, obviously your fight tonight, your birthday tomorrow. Are, are you looking forward to doing anything special for your birthday, or is this fight basically your present? Uh, yeah, this is basically my present. You know, I've been so focused on this. It, it was kind of hard to focus on a, a, a birthday party per se, but uh, I'm actually going to be in town for the week, so I'll have plenty of time to plan something out. But, yeah, this this is what I love to do. This is my party, and it just happens to be right before my birthday, so it makes it that much better. And, and you're the co-main event. Uh, yeah. The main event, obviously, uh, some people have been talking about it for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, you've obviously seen Yatsen Klai many times before, yeah. but you've, you've actually fought Cheeky. Yeah, I've seen uh, him up close. So you've seen him <laughs> up close. So uh, let's just get a professional uh, Muay Thai fighter's point of view on the, the main event. How do you see it going down? Uh, you know, Cheeky's got a tall mountain to climb, but uh, like I said, if anybody could do it, he can do it. You know, Cheeky is not one to be underestimated. He's not one to be intimidated. You know, but he's been in there with the uh, legends, you know. If anybody can do it, he can do it. But yards, yards, yard. You know what I mean? It's that's a it's a tough tough hill to climb. But I think it'll be a great fight regardless, and uh, he'll just get better, win, lose, or draw. So. Well, I tell you what, all of us out here in Las Vegas who have been following your career, Kevin, uh, throughout the years, well, since you moved here anyways in 1994, uh, <laughs> you know, back there all the way from Reading, Pennsylvania, you know, what we still feel like you're a hometown guy. Because yeah. if you live here for more than six months to a year, you're yeah. basically a hometown guy. Yeah, you got that credit. You got that yeah, credit. So uh, we're going to let you go because all we right. know you've got some preparation to do. We're going to take another quick commercial break here on the MMA Fight Corner. When we come back, we're going to be talking to CEO of Lion Fight Promotions, Mr. Scott Kent and anticipation for the main card which will be starting at 7 p.m. and of course uh, the co-main event uh, headliner here Kevin Ross thanks so much for joining us best of thank luck you, here tonight against uh, Mr. Embry there I appreciate it guys all right well like I said we are going to take a quick commercial break when we come back we do have Scott Kent we're also going to break down a little bit of MMA news that Heidi's got so stay tuned to the MMA fight corner living in Las Vegas is great dealing with the desert heat is a challenge to us all especially Three minutes, guys. Three minutes. Exercising regularly, your body loses tons of water and electrolytes and can be very hard to get back in a short period of time. This is when you turn to the pros at Vita Heaven. Created and tested by Dr. Jason Burke, Vita Heaven can reinfuse your body with everything from B12 and high dose vitamin C to full scale performance hydration. Keep yourself performing at the highest level. Go to VitaHeavenLV.com. Pause this for the next 20 minutes on the live Can you imagine living here in Las Vegas seven years ago? Back when there was no such thing as air conditioning, I can't. Which is probably why there weren't many folks who did look. Luckily, it wasn't long before a little company introduced the first heating and air conditioning systems to the desert. Since 1954, Yes Air Conditioning has been servicing the Las Vegas Valley, making our desert livable and comfortable. It still does today. Because unlike a lot of companies that have come and gone, we always have a simple strategy. Get your system working and keep it working. I mean, so it stays quiet and does its job. Because she doesn't have so any you don't have to think about it. Hour, so, at least so whether you way, need a new air conditioning system or need service for yours, yeah. the Yes Man will yeah. get it working What's and that? keep it working. 
I don't know. Give yourself the I'm peace of mind of knowing myself. the Yes Man can. Call 888-4937 or visit the yesmancan.com. Scott. 71246. Mr. Ken. At Dollar Loan Center, we keep it simple. We lend more, we have more locations, and we cost less, way less. It's all at don'tbebroke.com. Keep rolling, right? Yeah. No sense to We understand it's more difficult to get credit these days. Well, Not at Dollar Loan Center. Actually, we have loosened our lending limits, expanded our online seconds, lending, so. and made it easier than ever to what get up to right $2,500 in a matter of minutes. Call 364-LOAN or log on to don'tbebroke.com to find out how. You can apply no matter how. Heidi, you with me? Uh, she is off headset right now. Tell her I taped the show. She needs to trying tape to see the, this part of the show. Oh, you taped the show too? Yes. Oh, great, great, great. Thank you, buddy. And get your loan fully funded online at don'tbebroke.com. Dollar Loan Center is your community short term lender. Check us out on the web at don'tbebroke.com or call 364 Loan today. Before you short sell your home, don't you want to try everything to save it? I'm attorney Marvin Longabaugh with Kung and Brown. And before you resort to short sale, call me at 967 6800. The Nevada Foreclosure Mediation Program can help you modify your loan Sit so you can down. afford to stay. If your bank won't make a deal, you can still short sell your home after you've given mediation a chance. Call 967-6800 to set up a free consultation. At Kung & Brown, 967-6800. All right, 30 seconds is Hangover Heaven. Uh, right. I'm going to hit the music with a minute left to go to get out. We want to make individual videos. Okay, great. When are we getting out, Armando? At the top of the hour, straight okay, up. Okay, gotcha, thanks. She'll have a clinically... You'll hear music when I come out. Sure, sure, good. Worst hangovers with a full range of treatments from vitamins and supplements to IV fluid replenishment and oxygen. Ten seconds. And Joey. short your hangover. Get online right now. Hangoverheaven.com. Hangoverheaven.com. Or call 990-0660. Okay, thank you. And now back to the MMA Fight Quarter. Fight Quarter. And welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner, broadcasting live from the joint inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Dave Carney alongside your hosts, Heidi Fang, Phil Devine, Joey Varner joining us this hour on Sports 920 The Game. Dr. Jason Burke from Hangover Heaven. You just heard the commercial, but guys, I got to tell you again, if you've got a hangover, your worries are now over. Dr. Burke and his staff of medical professionals can cure your hangover. Get online to hangoverheaven.com or give them a call at 900-0660. That's 900-0660. Get your hangover absolutely cured by medical professionals. Also want to say a big thanks to the LVinformer.com, Brooks Brothers Bail Bonds, and, of course, what we've been talking about all week, all month, and especially all day long, Lion Fight 10 which is going on right now at the joint inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. And joining us uh, in anticipation of the main card, which is going to be starting in about an hour and 16 minutes, is the CEO of Lion Fight Promotions, Scott Kent. Uh, Scott, thanks so much for taking time out of your exceedingly busy, uh, you know, fight day schedule here uh, to join us for a few minutes. We really appreciate it. How are things going? How was the first fight with Jason and JP? Oh, uh, wait. Scott and I have oh. a little bit of beef right now. <laughs> <laughs> Scott comes out here and he's like, you should have seen that first amateur amateur fight and Man. he starts explaining and I, I had to tune him out because I'm out here and I missed it. I thought I would come out here and find like four empty microphones. I thought you guys were fight fans, for God's sakes. Yeah, that's, exactly. a, that's what's about to happen. Yeah, we'd have some. We'd have a whole other fight on our head. Uh, we'd have somebody looking for us. That's all we know. So, yeah. uh, you know, Scott. I mean, obviously, a huge day down here at the joint inside the Hard Rock. I mean, we've been talking about it, but fans are piling in here uh, to the joint. So the first fight that was Jason Andrada and JP Cole, correct? Correct. Okay. What was the result of this or one? No. no, that's the first fight. Oh, that was that's the first uh, pro fight. I'm sorry. What was the first amateur fight we had here tonight? Uh, it was Nico from Los Angeles. Okay. He came in. Uh, he fought Nikolai, uh, the, the Vegas fighter. Okay, great. It was an amazing back-and-forth fight. Huge crowd. You'd think it was a pro fight. They, he, he traveled. He brought a lot of folks with him. So it was a very exciting fight. Excellent, excellent. Well, we've still got, uh, like I said, about an hour and 16 minutes until uh, the main card uh, begins officially. Now, I, I don't know if you've got a count, but uh, tickets, like you said, must be almost gone, Scott. Are there any tickets left if folks are driving around uh, out here in Las Vegas and listening to us on 920? Are there a few tickets left here that, that folks could make an immediate decision come down right now? Yeah, we opened up a couple sections. There are some tickets still available in all of the price categories. 
but it is uh, getting close to a sellout. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what we thought. That's fantastic. Um, and of course, this being Scott, your sixth event here now at the Hard Rock. How do you feel this one stacks up to the others? You know, I think it's been a learning process. You know, starting a new company and the process that we've gone through. Bringing Yachts and Clyde back was huge. Bringing the quality of card that we've got, and to have two world title fights on the same card is amazing for our company and it shows how far we've come and i think the fact that the attendance and the buzz that you guys are creating just shows how far muay thai is coming in america yeah no it, dave talks about how this is your sixth event here at the hard rock and the learning curve that you've been going through uh yesterday you kind of had a hiccup or it was the day before where a fighter had to pull out of the fight quickly but you were able to change things around get someone else in there explain what happened in the malapay fight yeah, we had a fighter that was coming from Canada for whatever reason. They wouldn't let him through customs. Uh, there was no real oh, reason ever wow. given for anybody. So we were lucky enough to have Christine Toledo, who you talked to earlier, our matchmaker. She was able to, uh, you know, look into her crystal ball and find an opponent, and everything worked out very well. Yeah, and that was Hakeem Duwada. Du is that how you pronounce yep. his name? Yep. He was supposed to fight Malapay, but now we have a rematch because he actually fought his opponent tonight, who's Sean Carney. He fought him a couple months back. Yeah, and it was an excellent fight. It was a really close fight. It was very kind of a contested controversial. Decision. Yeah, yes, very controversial. Yes, yes. So we're actually uh, really excited with that replacement bout. Absolutely. Yeah, it definitely adds to it. Well, and you guys have had uh, Malapet on a, a couple of your different Lion Fight cards uh, throughout the last few years. Isn't that true? Yeah, he's a fan favorite. He brings a lot of folks from California. He's a former Thai champion, a lot of class, and he's very entertaining. Yeah, he actually, it was yesterday pretty funny. He put on his uh, Facebook or his Twitter that uh, his gym was closed until 8 p.m. tonight, which pretty <laughs> much which means that yeah. as soon as his fight's over, either he's going back there to open it up or his cl his crew will. But, you know, always fighting, always ready to go. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, and he, he, I don't know if he'll be doing it tonight, but every time he's come out in the past, he comes out with the traditional Thai music and does the whole the, the, the presentation, it's a presentation. It really is. It, it's such a, an amazing thing to see. You know, like you say, a traditional Thai fighter. Right. Oh, very fan fa favorite. Always entertaining. It's going to be a good night, Scott. Absolutely. Leg kicks, I think, are going to be the theme tonight. Between Yods and Clay and Malapet, these guys are animals. And you look at their thighs. You look at these guys. Tree trunks. And you wonder <laughs> how these guys, how much velocity they can get on these kicks. It, it's stunning to me. You know, these guys are 160 pounds, 147 pounds. And it's, it's just amazing. The analogy they always give is a baseball bat traveling at 80 miles per hour. Because when you kick in Thai boxing, you don't kick with your foot. You kick with your shin bone. So if you're sitting at home and you're driving in a stoplight right now, reach down and, and feel from your knee. Find that bone kind of with your forefinger and your thumb and slide that all the way down. And it feels like a crowbar right under there. And that's what they're kicking at. And the velocity that it generates is 80 miles per hour. Let me tell you something. When you're sitting in this arena and you're sitting in the joint, when you're at the Hard Rock and you're watching the fights go down, you're not just watching. I said this time and time again, you're hearing it, you're feeling it. The shin bone cracking against head, cracking against ribs, cracking against shin bone, because the way you block a kick in Thai boxing is you use your own shin bone. Man, oh, it just makes you, it gives you the chills. You see it, you hear it, and you feel it. It makes you flinch like you just got kicked yourself. It's something else, man. It's an incredible experience. If, if you've never been to a Muay Thai fight before, think of it this way. Joe Pesci in Casino. Remember the way he took <laughs> the end? You know, Baseball that. bat. To the head, and, and listen, we talked about it before how Muay Thai is such a brutal, just nasty, but beautiful stand-up sport. It is so violent, but it is such an art, and when you see it at the highest level, like you are going to see it tonight, if you're not down here at the Hard Rock, watch it on Access TV, you will not be disappointed. Yeah, it really becomes, I think, in my opinion, guys, you know, one of the most addictive kinds of, of martial arts, and especially for fans of mixed martial arts. I, we obviously do the MMA Fight Corner, so mixed martial arts is our game, but fans of MMA of all ilk really fall in love uh, with the Lion Fight promotions. Uh, I guess the, the, the whole way that you put together uh, the show, from the way that you set up the inside, the, the staging, the, you know, the, the choice of venue here, uh, to the fighters that you bring on here, Scott, this is the kind of thing that will catch MMA fans by surprise if they weren't thinking about Muay Thai before. Absolutely. And the way we've always kind of described it, because for, for Muay Thai to grow, we need to go beyond that traditional Muay Thai crowd that's going to travel and see every show. So we're, we're tapping into the UFC crowd, the mixed martial arts crowd. 
You know, if you love stand-up fighting, you love striking with the knees and the elbows, this is tailor-made for you. And just like the amateur fight that, you know, Phil just missed. Yeah, yeah. rub it in again. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. Salt in the wound, Scott. Salt you know, that's, the that's, that's going to make it into this week in MMA history with Phil. He's going to be like, the time I missed a really great Something amateur he didn't fight. Know. Yeah. Very, very rarely do I miss fights, and I'm going to hold this against you. <laughs> Well, you know, guys, while we've still got Scott on here, I wanted to talk about uh, the after party at the Ainsworth again. Now, Scott, we've been talking about this a, a bit throughout the broadcast here, but uh, break us down on, on this uh, Ainsworth party. Are you going to bring in some, some fighters afterwards also uh, to mingle with the folks and the fans out here? Absolutely. We've invited all of the fighters to come over. Ainsworth has been uh, a great partner for us. They've been showing our fights live or all of our previous DVDs for the last couple of days. Um, everybody's excited about, you know, traditionally they'll have the nightclub after party, which is fine, and people can still do that later. But we wanted a place where people could go at 9, 30, 10 o'clock, have a drink, meet the fighters, chat. And, that, that's uh, the thing, is the yeah, chatting. It, absolutely. It's, and, and I really I hate to say the word chatting like that, but <laughs> it is. It's yeah, that be, was it, pretty weak, it's wasn't be, it? It's, but to be <laughs> able to, to go one-on-one -on -one with the fighters, to be able to hang out with them in that environment, you can't do that in the nightclub. No, you can't. You can't. It's too loud. There's the dancing. the noise. Here, it's a perfect atmosphere for it. It is, guys. And I've been amazed with how many people that have just, in the two and a half years we've done this, to come up to me and just really thank us for bringing Muay Thai to the forefront in America, uh, bringing Yods and Clay in. I mean, how many people have just come here? I told you about a kid from Tennessee. I don't know if I mentioned him. He, he took the fight on a week's notice. Yeah, you sure did. Yeah, we, we had you on the yeah, show uh, yeah. the other day. We were talking about that. And he drove across the country just to fight on the same card with Yods and Clay. Absolutely. And I think that's, you know, uh, again, I mean, there's such a reverential element that comes with the Muay Thai fighting. Heidi's been talking about this. Uh, you know, the the, uh, the way that the fighters come out, uh, you know, uh, you know, onto, you know, the main stage and, and how they're being presented. This has got such a unique element to it uh, that so many other fighters uh, you know, fighting promotions or, or even, you know, fights in general just don't have. I mean, that's what makes us just so unique again. Yeah, it's a sport that's got a, a very proud heritage, a very proud background in Asia and Europe, and uh, to some extent in the United States. And I think that's, that's something else that's kind of refreshing. It's not just another combat sport. It's got a tradition. It's got a lot of custom and, and people and all the fighters are very reverential toward the fighters. They are icons in Thailand. And to be able to bring the biggest name out here is, is, is huge for our company. Yeah, we were talking about Yad being a, a three-time Lupini sta Stadium champion, all right, uh, in two different weight classes. And, you know, he, he's on a six-fight win streak right now, but he had lost a few in a row, and people were questioning whether or not he had that desire, the, you know, the, the edge to still compete. And he admitted he kind of, things got I mean, kind of drained out. He was tired of the whole song and dance. And he said that his mother was a big influence on getting him back in there. But you know what I think it was? I think it was you giving him the opportunity to fight here in America. I think that, and what he was talking about was the fact of how excited he is for this fight because he's facing a North American on, North, on USA soil, which he didn't get to do last time. So he's even more pumped for this fight. I'm looking for even a more exciting you know, show from him than last time. Yeah, he's, he's obviously an amazing fighter. One of the things that we tried to do is... is is to, to bring him back. We're going to try and bring him back again. As often as we can get this guy, we're going to bring him back because he's such a great ambassador of the sport. Um, getting him in the United States is, you know, it's like anything else in the world. You know, you haven't really made it that big until you've made it in the United States. And, you know, he's, he's the man in Thailand, and he's the man everywhere he goes. I think he saw this as a challenge. I think he's been reinvigorated by this, and I think you're absolutely right. I think it really has re-motivated him in his training. You're seeing a whole different Yodson Clyde these last couple of fights. Yeah, yeah, and that was the thing is, you know, uh, people had kind of questioned his cardio and his gas tank in the past, and, and I think that's all done. I, I think you have a fully, you know, ready, motivated Yodson Clyde, and that is a scary, scary thing. Yeah, he's an amazing athlete. We took him out to dinner last night, you know, after the weigh-in. He ate like a horse. <laughs> so I know this guy, and I asked him what he had for breakfast this morning, and he said ice cream. 
Wow. So this guy knows his body <laughs> hey, that's better the than anybody. That's the breakfast right? of champions. Well, <laughs> uh, Scott Kent, CEO of Lion Fight Promotions. Of course, Lion Fight Tan is going on right now at the joint inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. There are still a select few tickets available left for the main card, which is going to be starting in right about an hour. So, Scott, we know you've got to go and take care of some business. We're going to be wrapping up here on Sports 920, the game with our live broadcast here in about three minutes. So thank you very much for coming on with us. We'll see you back in there in just a little while, and hopefully Phil will get his fix uh, sooner rather than later. He'll be back on track. Scott, record that next fight on your phone and bring it on out to me, all right, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> who's responsible for Phil tonight? Who's going to bring him in? Huh? Yeah, I, I, Not me. I, I don't know who's going to bring him that. in. I think we're going to all worry about how Phil's going to get out of here, and thankfully we've got our good friend Dr. Jason Burke yeah. from Hangover Heaven right he here. Home. Now, <laughs> again, guys, I'm going to tell you this is the best way to get your hangover cured. All you have to do is go online, make an appointment, hangoverheaven.com, or give them a call at 900-0660, 900-0660. And, Doctor, for folks that are staying right here inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, you can actually come up to their room, do in-room treatments, have them get back on track, get back to their vacation, get back to their weekend, whatever that happens to be. How many folks do you think you guys see in hotel rooms on a week, uh, weekend basis? On a weekend basis, probably at least 30 or 40. Wow. And uh, it's a big part of our business, very convenient for people. People really like it. And uh, people ought to come down here and check out the fight tonight. I'm excited to see it. One thing I really like about Muay Thai is that the guys fight a lot. I'm a big fan of the UFC, but, you know, some of my favorite fighters fight, like, once a year. Yeah, that's and true. This guy, Yadson Klein, fought 240 fights. I know. Isn't, isn't that <laughs> yeah. and, and you know what I'm going to tell you, too? Not, not for nothing, but he's, like, seriously more, more handsome than a lot of the UFC fighters are still. I don't know how it is you can take all that punishment and still remain such a baby face. I thought, wow, this guy looks fantastic. He's been in 200 and some fights. And he's been fighting since he's eight years yeah, absolutely. old. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. It's ice cream for breakfast, guys. <laughs> that's, yep. the right there. that's the I'm, other I'm thing. I'm switching up my diet. Sorry, Mike Dolce. <laughs> all right. So real quick, guys, because we've only got about a minute and a half left here before we are all done with the Friday night edition of the MMA Fight Corner on Sports 920, the game. Heidi, going to start with you. Predictions for tonight's fight between Yadson Klai and Chike. Yad. Yad. Just simple. Easy. Like it. <laughs> Phil, I want your predictions on Kevin Ross, Matt Embry. Uh, like I said, this is the most anticipated fight of two North American Muay Thai fighters in a long time. Uh, I think... Kevin is the better boxer. I think um, I think Embry is going to make this a tough fight, but I think overall Kevin has just got uh, he's got what it takes to win this fight. Excellent. And Joey, lastly, uh, with you, Lucy Payne, Tiffany Van Soost, your thoughts. You know, Lucy, her name says it right. She brings the pain, but the time bomb is ticking, and I think it's going to go off tonight. Oh, boy, I sure love it when he starts rhyming. You can tell he's saying something important. And he rhymes without even giving you the correct answer. He just beats around it. He's like, pain's he coming, yeah. but the time, time bomb's, bomb's kicking. kicking. Yeah, that's well, Joey's got a new line of, of punch-drunk children's books coming out here soon. <laughs> it's going to be Joe Stradamus' Revenge. So, again, uh, Scott Kent, CEO of Lion Fight Promotions, Dr. Jason Burke of Hangover and Vita Heaven, LV, and of course, Joey Varner, Phil Devine, Heidi Fang. I'm Dave Carney, guys. This has been a fast-paced, super fun Friday night edition of the MMA Fight Corner. We are going to jump off of Sports 920, the game, and rejoin ourselves on our live stream. Thanks so much for tuning in to the MMA Fight Corner. Good job, guys. Armando, man. It's awesome, awesome working with you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Same hey. back at you. Now let's do it more often. Yeah, I, I know it, man. Hey, during uh, during Wrangler season, we will. All right, buddy. <laughs> all right, man. I'll Get talk to you. guys. Miss you. All right. They all say bye, waving on the bye, phone here. Armando. All right. Could you hear all that? I tried to pick up Ambient, Mike. Yes. All right, buddy. Thanks so much, you man. You, you rock. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye.